We're talking about tissue hypothyroidism. Now, this is a concept under the basis of cellular hypothyroidism and or the lack of getting tissue adequate levels of the thyroid hormone in the tissues themselves. From a conventional standpoint, when we treat the thyroid, what we do is we treat with an exogenous replacement hormone and we look for the negative feedback response as the TSH will get suppressed. On paper, this works because on paper, the goal is simply to give exogenous hormone, pretty much usually T4, and you just wanna watch the T4 levels go up and you wanna watch the TSH go down. Now, the problem with treating like this is you're treating directly based on paper. This is a paper treatment. This is a numerical treatment. This does not take into account the patient's symptomatic response. If I were to treat or direct a, a response, a therapeutic response based on the TSH being suppressed, that would be no different than if I were to treat someone low T and put them on T and only look at the LH levels being suppressed without actually looking at the testosterone level or without looking at the symptomatic improvement in the patient. That's a flawed approach, but that is the approach that we've typically been taught. Unfortunately, treating based on the suppression of tropic hormones has become the convention and the guideline gold standard. And here's where the concept of tissue hypothyroidism comes into play. Tissue hypothyroidism, otherwise some people refer to it as um, cellular hypothyroidism, is essentially the treatment refractory point. You, you treat the patient with the exogenous hormone, their levels look great on paper, the serum levels go up, the free levels go up. Yeah, they should be great, right? Should have symptomatic improvement, right? Because the numbers look great. But the problem is you're not getting any kind of symptomatic resolution. And that's because a lot of the hormones benefits are exerted at the tissue level. And this can apply to both free T and or free T4. Some of this tissue resistance can be, be can be secondary to chronic disease, chronic dieting, chronic physical, emotional stress, diabetes, insulin resistance. The literature has shown us that if you have conditions like that, heck, even like chronic pain, like fibromyalgia, those conditions can reduce serum levels upwards of 30-ish percent. And it's speculated it can actually reduce tissue levels somewhere in the ballpark of about 70-ish percent. Long story short, what we've learned over the last couple of decades, which Dr. Grant's been wonderful at talking about uh, things such as the intrachronology of these hormones. Now he's talked ad nauseum about estradiol as, as an intracrine hormone. We know that DHT also expresses the vast majority of his actions also as an intracrine hormone. Also they have some paracrine activity. We know that IGF-1 also has some intracrine slash paracrine activity. But we also now know that T3, T4, the thyroid hormones also express the vast majority of their activity as an intracrine hormone. And again, a lot of the, the, the benefits of the hormones are come at the tissue level. So ultimately, the goal is to treat the patient symptomatically and not really chase the numbers.